Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia updates its influenza preparedness plans as the novel coronavirus continues to spread. A new home for the Castries Fisher Folk Cooperatives, the Department of Health and Wellness solicits the assistance of the public in conducting a survey on chronic diseases. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. St. Lucia is updating its influenza preparedness plans as the coronavirus continues to spread. The World Health Organization reported on the new strain of the coronavirus in Wuhan, China on January 9, 2020. As of January 25, 1,320 cases have been confirmed. Of those cases, 1,297 reported from China, with 23 cases outside of China across nine countries. Local health authorities have been working closely with international and regional partners as they provide guidelines to manage the virus. Dr. Sharon Belmar george the chief medical officer, updated the public on what is known so far about the virus. Coronaviruses cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe respiratory illness such as the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and also severe acute respiratory syndrome. The signs of, of, the, of the infection include respiratory symptoms, fever, usually a cough which is dry or unproductive, shortness of breath and difficulty um, breathing. In severe cases, pneumonia may develop and severe respiratory syndrome which is what leads to death. This new strain has not been previously identified in humans. And we wait, as with other countries, we've been receiving information on this new virus as it is being, as it's being investigated. There's limited information on the characterization of the behavior of the virus, the severity of infection, and also the levels of transmissibility. Dr. Belmar George says that although the risk level for the Caribbean subregion is currently classified as low and the disease is at an early stage of the outbreak, the Department of Health and Wellness is proceeding with the necessary vigilance and preparation to reduce the possible impact on the population. We have been updating our existing influenza preparedness um, plans and some of the activities that we have been working on includes but not limited to the education and sensitization of our health workers, non-health stakeholders and the general public, the enhancement of our port health services, active surveillance at high-risk institutions, prompt recognition strategies, ensure measures to ensure isolation of ill cases in designated hospital isolation wards, establishing diagnostic capacity, working with the Caribbean Public Health Agency, contact tracing and quarantine of suspect cases, and the promotion of general hygiene measures and infection control for border agency, healthcare professional, and the general public. In the interim, the public is also continue to practice standard recommendations to prevent and reduce the spread of infection of respiratory illness or in general. The Department of Health and Wellness will continue to monitor the coronavirus in the interim. It asks persons to continue the standard recommendations to prevent the spread of viral infections, which include washing of hands, covering your mouth and nose with disposable tissues or clothing when coughing or sneezing, as well as avoiding close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness such as coughing and sneezing. A new home for the Castries Fisher Folk Cooperative was recently commissioned, signaling a new era for the organization and its membership. Amanda Faye Clark brings us the details. The overarching aim of the Castries Fishers Cooperative Society Limited is to improve the livelihoods of its member fishers and that of the Castries fishing community, while promoting the sustainable use of marine resources, contribute to food and nutrition security, and economic and social development. President of the Castries Fishers Cooperative Society Limited, Thaddeus Augustine, says the time is ripe for the entity's membership to step into the future and play a greater role in their development and safety, particularly while out at sea. Three critical areas were singled out for focus this year, namely capacity building, policy advocacy, and policy engagement. When talking about fishers and cooperatives, there are a lot to talk about, such as climate change, safety at sea, bylaws, weather report, marine police, open season, closed season for fisheries, 
and the list can go on and on. But I do not really want to talk about these things. I want to make reference to just what we call a seed. A small seed was sown. Minister with Responsibility for the Island's Fisheries Development, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, in applauding the latest achievement of the Castries Fishers Cooperative Society Limited, insists that the organization's vigor in attending to the needs of its membership is seen by his ministry's leaders as commitment to further exploration and augmentation of interventions to enhance the potential of the national fisheries economy. We see this sector as very important, very, very important. Because when we look at the figures last year, the first half of last year, compared to 2018, the figures are very encouraging. Over $22 million was realized by that sector. $22 million for the first half of last year only. The only other sector that can compete with the fishery sector now is the banana industry. So which means your contribution is significant. In fact, the figures for 2019 between January to, to June is 50% higher than what we realized in 2018. Developing the capacity and knowledge base of its members to manage successful fisheries operations and to participate in sustainable fisheries governance and management at all levels are some of the areas to receive attention in 2020. From the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Fee Clark reporting. Another agency is in full support of the implementation of Article 164 of the revised Treaty of Chagaramas across CARICOM member states. Export St. Lucia will be moving swiftly to take advantage of the benefits for those whom they represent. CEO Sunita Daniel says there needs to be a development strategy for manufacturers, otherwise the full benefits will not be achieved. I have a few more officers who will be working directly with those businesses, uh, those companies that have been um, targeted to benefit under Article 164. So we have some major industries, for example, malt producers, bay, stout, animal feed, the solar water heaters for domestic purposes, furniture manufacturers and water manufacturers. That's just a little um, snippet from the long list of domestic enterprises who will be protected. So there will be an import tariff levied on products coming from, competing products coming from um, Jamaica, Barbados, Guyana, who am I missing? And Trinidad. So about 70% and 100% more tariff will be placed on products coming from there so that our infant industries and our domestic industries have the opportunity now to grow. The agency will also seek to explore what deficiencies manufacturers are experiencing. We have a market research unit in-house and we'll be doing a lot more research on the markets, really guiding our, our businesses as to where they should be exporting to. We'll also be going into the markets within CARICOM and within OECS to look for additional opportunities for them. One of the things that we really want to do also is a lot of this is maybe technical for them. We really want to address where the gap is. And for a lot of those businesses, they don't have the proper equipment. They probably don't have the proper standards. They may have a few weaknesses internally. And that's one of the things we really want to look at as much as possible that we address those needs. So is there a piece of equipment that they are missing to meet the export market? And so we'd be looking for ways to assist them in getting funding to ensure that that equipment is in their operations. Um, are they missing any particular standards? Are they having difficulty meeting standards? And that's where we will come in, come into play with the Bureau, of the Bureau of Standards to ensure that they are able to meet those standards. Article 164 of the revised Treaty of Chagaramas was rolled out among CARICA member states on January 1, 2020. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment.
The Independence 41 Gospel Extravaganza 2020 kicks off our independence celebrations on Saturday, 1st February 2020 at 7 p.m. at the National Cultural Center under the theme, Now is the Time, Let's Praise, Reflect, Love give thanks. Come join us for a night of inspirational pieces featuring gospel groups, singers, dancers, and musicians from various denominations around the island. Take in an amazing production building on the origin of Negro spirituals as we worship together. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. The Department of Health and Wellness is enlisting the help of the general public as it continues to roll out its STEPS Behavioral Risk Factor Survey. The survey, which commenced in December of 2019, is patterned after the World Health Organization's STEPS survey, which is done every five years on chronic diseases. In St. Lucia, every year, 82% of all deaths are attributed to chronic diseases. The survey seeks to understand why the population is dying from these diseases. Anissa Antoine reports. The Department of Health and Wellness has embarked upon the STEPS Behavioral Risk Factor Survey to monitor the causes and effects of chronic diseases. The survey, which began in December 2019, monitors behavioral risk factors such as smoking, alcohol consumption and unhealthy eating, as well as biological risk factors including high cholesterol levels, high blood pressure and obesity. Dr. Shana Sir Philbert, Senior Medical Officer of Chronic Diseases at the Ministry of Health, explained that the Behavioral Risk Factor Survey is divided into three steps. We ask questions as it relates to their health, what diseases they suffer from, and things like that. That's the first part of it. It's actually a question. And the second part has to do with measurements. So blood pressure is measured, waist, the size of their waist, the height, the weight. The third part, the, or the third step, if you want to call it that, has to do with um, the biochemistry. We actually examine the blood for the respondents. So we do total cholesterol levels, we do triglycerides, blood sugars, and we actually um, test urine to check kidney function and the salt content in the urine, which will allow us to know how much salt persons are actually consuming. So um, that survey is very important because as we look at chronic diseases, we have to look at the risk factors or, or those things that make persons more prone to getting those diseases. Alma Dolo, Assistant Principal Nursing Officer at the Ministry of Health, is urging the public to cooperate with the enumerators and nurses during the data collection process. As you see those persons come into your house, St. Lucia, we really need your participation because if we do not respond and we do not get the numbers we are looking for, you can imagine all our efforts and, and contributions are going to go to waste. So we doing this survey, not just because we want to take up your time or because we know persons are busy, but we're doing it because we need that data. We need that information so that we could use it as to make changes in our programs that the ministry we can help the ministry in policy making to make changes in programs that we already have established is it working is it not working we also need it so that if we could help schools you know make um, change programs activities and also if we need any funding we need evidence 71 percent of deaths worldwide are attributed to chronic diseases in St. Lucia, 82% of the mortality rate is attributed to chronic diseases. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueole. St. Lucia! Are, are you ready for the National Independence Parade? Celebrate our independence in a grand way this February 22nd, starting at the SAB in VG. Come experience a true St. Lucian spectacle with amazing floats, traditional dancers, musicians, and more. Led by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and include communities, ministries, and business houses. Join in the excitement and let's Show the best of St. Lucia. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. 
Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable de formation en gouvernement de la CGIS, à Sommet de la Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, à propos de nouvelles à Créole. Pour ça, Primus Hutchinson. Département de santé, c'est le si. Chaque après démarche, vous faites public là, au courant, et puis mauvais maladie, Corona. Corona, c'est une mauvaise maladie qui est capable aussi de mettre des gens pour les autres et de développer un pays chine. Selon l'Organisation Santé Mondiale, Corona, j'ai appris la vie de les et la j'ai plusieurs cas en pays chine, pays l'Amérique, Australie et qui ont beaucoup d'autres pays. Je ne sais pas comment dire que la maladie Corona a affecté les gens et puis mauvais la fièvre, toussé et problème de l'expiration. Comme c'est une maladie qui est nouveau, santé mondiale et l'autre agence internationale, chacun fait oui, pour être en façon pour adresser la maladie. Selon le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, malgré la maladie, il n'y a pas bah, toujours. Le département de santé, quand même, chacun prend ses qualités de marche là, pour rester en écoute et en préparation pour essayer de réduire les possibilités et puis attaquer la population. Dr. Melba George déclare que le département de santé, présentement, qu'a mis des plans de préparation en place pour la maladie de flou, et aussi qu'a travaillé à l'éducation, le travail de santé et le public, là, généralement, la jeune action en place pour augmenter le service de santé et pour placer l'attention très fort à les, les institutions qui s'apportent au risque la Wad PIA, les hôtels, et pour identifier les gens qui visitent le pays chinois récemment. La préparation est en place pour faire assurer les gens qui peuvent trouver affectés dans une chambre d'hôpital qui est bien barré hors de l'autre monde. Pour aussi faire assurer que les gens qui peuvent être affectés par continuer pour nous contacter et le public. Là, il y a aussi des plans en place pour faire assurer que les gens suivent le bon wig de santé. Le département de santé. Car qu'il y a ce public là, généralement, pour point toute précaution qui est nécessaire, comme le département qui a continué à veiller le développement de mauvais maladies, le département de santé qui a conseillé le public là, pour toujours laver la main, couvrir la bouche et la main, particulièrement les gens qui ont esténé et bien tous et pour rester bien loin de n'importe qui qui n'a pas de problème de l'expiration, et bien qui a tous et bien qui a esténé en pile. Ambassade du Japon et autorité de ménagement à faire sortir à cette ci j'ai entré dans un gymnase pour adresser à faire l'environnement en pays. Derrière cela, c'est un argument qui a fait possible pour payer à trouver en haut 80 000 dollars américains pour acheter l'auto pour amasser les ordi. Malgré que l'auto ça pas neuf, il y a un peu en ville castrée. Ambassade du Japon, Tatsu Hirayama, déclaré que l'assistance à la qui a placé les résidents en position pour une des capacités pour ménager et pour aussi capable pour servir diverses techniques pour adresser les, les affaires et l'événement primaire. L'ambassadeur Hirayama dit aussi qu'il n'y a pas que c'est l'autre de salaire qui a aidé pour castrer, pour castrer, amasser les ordi plus souvent, mais plus toujours pour faire payer plus au courant et puis l'importance des ménagements ordi. Ministre des Affaires et Éducation, et le développement sustainable, on est Dr. Gail Rigobert, mais merci au gouvernement Japon pour continuer pour assister et faire contribution au ménagement de l'ordre Le ministre de la responsabilité pour faire les étrangers et les représentatifs du Parlement pour ville castrée, on est Sir Flood Bobre, complémenté l'autorité en effort pour abattre les problèmes de et pour qui cette ici toujours rester propre dans un environnement sans et sauf et qui ont commune côté tout le monde a des bon esprit de contentement. A commencé à le gouvernement Japon et l'autorité des affaires et ménagements ont dit à cette ci de le 6 janvier 2020. En continuation, on apprend nous concernant l'adresse du Premier ministre, on a une chance pour l'année nouvelle, comme on dit pour mettre tout. nous avons adressé l'investissement qui a fait en ville souffrière. Le Premier ministre, le Premier ministre Chassene, parlait de Hummingbird Beach Park, qui le gouvernement ouvert l'année passée. Grand Square en mettant ville là, qui a réformé et aussi redéveloppé Grand Bowl Old Trafford, pour une place 
pour les cultivateurs et aussi les établissements pour l'autopassage de Gawé. Le Premier ministre a parlé de Sulphur Springs Park, ça c'est le développement en souffle, le travail qui a commencé à sous des facilités de sport. Le travail déjà aussi commencé à sous ces chemins souffrières, avec le bâtiment de l'hôpital là, j'ai commencé aussi. Alors, c'est là, oui, mais ça ce n'est pas. Le j'ai arrivé à une position avant de gouer pour la fête touristique qui est en place pour ville et village au niveau cette ici. Ce programme touristique, ça là, j'ai commencé à gosiller et à cela, et tout de suite, la caïne est toute, la caïne est à toutes les côtes pays. Par façade, castouille avec notre pays, le premier ministre Chasney parlait du programme de oui, développement de la place castouille qui a résisté au mauvais cyclone. Le plan, c'est pour faire de la place 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 de la établissement pour ni cette place de la 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 ministre des Affaires Touristiques, honorable Dominique Fede, de la ministre des Affaires Touristiques pour l'année à tout le monde qui là. Et pour aussi, c'est le ci qui gagne encore, puis pour le pays, côté destination, limo yon, pour les lamoues qui a visité. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons tout le monde là. Nous avons remercié au temps pour qu'il y ait des Nous avons eu une invitation pour que je puisse encore. Si des cas se la vie, nous avons eu une autre nouvelle. Merci, Opel Primus. Et ici, nous avons eu un regard à ce qui est arrivé à nous, weather-wise. Partly cloudy, becoming cloudy at times, with some scattered showers over the northern Leeward Islands. Further south, it will be fair to partly cloudy, with a few showers. The Atlantic High Pressure System will continue to generate light to moderate easterly winds across the Eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. A lingering weak frontal trough will continue to cause occasional cloudiness and showers over the northern Leeward Islands during the next 24 hours. Low-level moisture and instability will cause a few showers over the remainder of the region during the forecast period. Tides for Castries Harbour, high at 5.54 p.m., low at 12.23 a.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, low at 12.59 p.m., High at 7.01 p.m. Seas, slight to moderate with waves 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6.31 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Tross.